Okay, all you vestry members, here's a question. How can you expect people to be something and to do something well if they don't know who they are and what it means to be who they are? Well, I certainly don't think you can. And I am assuming that every single one of you listening to this want to do the very best job you can for God and for the people of your parish. After all, they're the ones who've entrusted you with this ministry by electing you to it. To do the best job you can, I think you need to know a number of things. And today, I'm just going to limit our focus upon these. You need to understand, one, what the nature is of the relationship between a parish priest and the parish and what that means for who and what the vestry is. Two, you need to know what the purposes of the church are. Three, you need to know what the priest and the vestry's responsibilities and authority are in achieving those purposes of the church. And then finally, you need to know the significance of their joint ministry, the ministry together of the priest and the vestry. Now there are, I think, several other areas which need to be addressed, but not today. Let's call today Vestry 101. So first, the nature of the relationship between a parish priest and the parish, and what that means for who and what the vestry is. It begins with the fact that the church's understanding of herself is that she is not an organization. She's not like a country club or a social service or a bank. Nope, she's an organism, a living and a breathing thing, just like a human being. She's a family. Because of this, the nature of the relationship between a priest and a parish is familial. In one way, it is that of a husband and a wife. In another way, it's that of a father and his children, a shepherd and his flock. Because of this understanding, the priest's role in a parish is not that of a job, nor of a hire, an employee. It's that of a ministry, a care of souls. And the old way of saying this that you'll come across in various places is a cure of souls. Now this fact identifies what the relationship is between a priest and his vestry. It's a nuptial relationship, a husband and a wife. The vestry is that body of people elected by their fellow parishioners to be joined with their priest in the care and the oversight of them. In essence, for a parish, the priest and the vestry are Get ready for it, parents. They're the father and the mother. They exercise for and over the parish the very ministry which a father and a mother exercise and bear in their family for and over their children. Now, if you don't understand that, and if you don't accept it, you'll never be able to do and to be for a parish what you are called to be and to do. And you'll never take seriously enough what it means to hold the office you do because you won't accept the great responsibility you bear and the great effect that you have on the parish. You'll simply be a functionary of an organization, filling a seat on a group which in some way from time to time actually has to do something. Now you may prefer being simply a functionary or just filling a seat at a table. But unfortunately, and sadly for the parish, regardless of your desire to be only this, that's not going to eliminate the nature of the effect you and your ministry have on the parish. Why? Because the nature of your office, together with your priest, is one of headship of a community. Now let me play that out for you very quickly, headship. You see, God has built order into his creation. Order is essential. It's essential not only to keep things from flying into chaos, but in order for things to achieve their potential. 
Therefore, every community has within it those who are to be governed and those called to govern them, those with whom the buck of responsibility for the community's welfare stops. And the government to be exercised by the governors is to be directed towards what? Towards helping the governed be, become, and do their best, tending to their needs and helping them achieve their potential. Parents are the governors of their families. Priests and vestries together are the governors of their family, the parish. Now here is the thing which is both wonderful and also awful about the ministry of the governors and what makes the quality of their ministry so very important. The quality of a community's headship greatly determines the nature and the development of the community in which it is exercised. Look at ourselves, every single one of us. The quality of the headship exercised over us by our parents has greatly affected us and formed us. The quality of their headship either aided us in becoming mature and responsible and constructive adults, or it has hindered us in becoming this, and we have had to overcome many things they formed in us in our attempts to emerge into constructive citizens of this world. That's the way it is with a parish. The quality of the headship of its priest and its vestry to a great extent determines the limits of what the parish can become and achieve. Now with all of that said, the purpose of the priest and the vestry is to help their family, their particular portion of the Church of God, to achieve the purposes of the church. So let's very quickly remember what those purposes are. There are only three, just three. The first is the worship of God, the second is the sanctification of her members, and the third is the evangelism of others. Let's look very quickly first at its first purpose, the worship of God. Very simply, worship is the living out of our love for God. And there are two ways in which we worship God in which we live at our love for him. One way is the one you and I ordinarily think of when we first hear the word worship. That is, acts like the mass, the offices of prayer, things like that. The second way in which we express our love for God through worship is the way in which we live, the way in which we deal with the world and the people within it. It's because of this that Anglican and Roman and Eastern Orthodox Christians have always had a phrase like this to guide us. We pray the Mass in order to live the Mass. So the worship of God, first purpose. Second purpose, the sanctification of all members of the church. We are to help one another become saints so we can be better lovers of God and can achieve our destiny of being citizens of heaven forever. And a saint is what? A saint is simply a real human being. You and I aren't right now real human beings. We're becoming that, hopefully. We're fallen human beings, subhuman. The grace of God through the crucified and risen Christ comes to us in order to restore us to our dignity, our likeness to God, saints. And then the third purpose of the church is evangelism. We're to bring others to Christ and his church so that they can become what God wants them to be, saints, and so that they can achieve the destiny God wants for them of being citizens with us and with him forever of heaven. Now, everything in and about the church is to be directed towards the achieving of these three purposes. And the vestry came into being many centuries ago in our English branch of the Catholic Church expressly to join with the clergy in achieving these purposes in the local expression of the church, that is, the parish. Well, we don't have any time today to give you the interesting story of the vestry's emergence, so let's simply cut to the chase. What's the vestry? 
Well, the vestry is a group of laypersons. Note what I said, laypersons, no clergy may serve on a vestry. It's a group of laypersons elected by the congregation to serve in union with their priest as the leaders and the caretakers of the parish, making sure that the three purposes of God's church are being achieved and that the spiritual and the temporal affairs of the parish are taken care of. Now that word, the temporal affairs, temporary, you know that word? Temporal affairs refers to all of those things about our life which are temporary, things that are not going to last forever, things that are passing away, like our physical property, our finances, like the body of this person that's speaking to you right now. Not meant to last forever, but some other place forever. The vestry has a dual responsibility in all this. The first is to carry out a set of legal mandates as officers of a type of corporation. The second is to take responsibility with the priest, both for the preservation of the parish and for the parish's engagement in a ministry and a mission willed for her by God. The vestry and the parish seek to discern what that parish's mission and ministry is through prayerful dialogue with one another as well as through consultation with others. But understand this, the vestry is not one more volunteer chore expected of responsible parochial citizens, nor is it an honor which has no responsibilities and no obligations attached to it. Nope. The vestry is a trust committed by parishioners to certain of their fellows to lead them into the future in the service of God, exercising with their priest headship over them. And secondly, it's a form of Christian ministry directed towards enabling the parish to do her best in fulfilling the purposes of God's church. Now, the contours of the ministry of the vestry and of the priest are set out in our diocesan canons, that's the church word for laws, and in what is called the customary of our diocese. And a customary is simply a body of regulations which are designed to flesh out the canons, the laws. They indicate how the intent of a canon is to be carried into effect. Now you can find our diocesan canons and customary on the diocesan website and I very much encourage you vestry members to get those things before you and then do the good old Anglican thing with them. Read them, mark them, learn them, and inwardly digest them. But what I'm now going to do is to articulate by way of summary what our canons and our customary set out as the ministry of the priest in the vestry. You ready? Here's the summary. The governance of a parish identifies two elements which have to be secured and tended to well. One is the pastoral and spiritual element. The other is the temporal element. And the canons identify who it is who bears ultimate responsibility for each of these elements. The priest bears the primary responsibility and also has the necessary authority for the pastoral and the spiritual direction of the congregation. Now this has to do with worship, with preaching, with teaching, with pastoral care, things like that. The vestry, on the other hand, bears the primary responsibility and has the necessary authority for the temporal affairs of the parish. And that has to do with the upkeep of the physical property and its financial affairs. But before proceeding, let me say this. The priest is not just a sacramental functionary, tending only to things like worship, preaching, teaching, and pastoral care. Nope. As the head of the parish, as her father, her husband, the priest is ultimately responsible for ensuring that both aspects of the parish's life the spiritual and the temporal, are tended to well. But what do these things about who has primary responsibility and necessary authority 
for the spiritual and the temporal affairs mean? Are they completely separate from one another? Not on your life. And for the well-being and for the effective ministry of a parish, it better not be. Here it is. Yes, in terms of the spiritual affairs of a parish, it does mean that the vestry cannot dictate to the priest and overrule him in matters pertaining to the spirituality of the parish, matters of the liturgy and its conduct, the sacraments, preaching, teaching, pastoral care, and yes, also, in matters temporal, parish finances, upkeep of the property, and the physical plant, stuff like that. The priest cannot dictate to the vestry and command them to do what he thinks should be done in these areas. But here's the important question. Does that mean that the priest has no responsibility in relationship to a parish's temporal affairs? And that the vestry has no responsibility in relationship to the parish's spiritual affairs? No. That's absurd. And to act as if this is the case is as destructive to the welfare of a parish as it would be for a father and a mother to clearly delineate separate spheres of responsibility in their family and then exercise them in distinction to one another without mutual collaboration and consultation. There is nothing in our canons or the custom of the Anglican Church which prohibit the clergy from being involved with temporal affairs. And there is nothing in our canons or the custom of the Anglican Church which prohibits the vestry from being involved with their priest in the pastoral, theological, and spiritual life of the parish. Here's the way to understand this. In relationship to matters spiritual, the vestry is a council of advice and counsel to the priest. And in relationship to matters temporal, the priest is a council of advice and counsel to the vestry. And ordinarily, the priest is the one who has to oversee and put into effect the decisions the vestry makes in relationship to temporal matters. Now, our diocesan customary rightly speaks of this relationship in this way. The priest and the vestry are a team. Get that word, team. They are bound together as are a husband and a wife in concern for and in the achievement of both the spiritual and the temporal well-being of their family. Priest and vestries need to understand themselves as such and operate as such. Neither should attempt to go off on their own and make their decisions independent of one another. The priest should involve the vestry in matters spiritual. He should seek their counsel and advice. And the vestry has to involve the priest in all matters temporal, seeking his counsel and advice. And yeah, the vestry should remember that in the eyes of the parish, the priest ultimately is gonna take the hit from the parishioners for all vestry actions. Why? Because he's the head of the parish. Now, I would hope that with everything I've said thus far, you realize how important priest and vestry together are to the well-being of the parish. Now, while my remarks have summarized for you the meaning of the canonical regulations for both, I want to come down hard on the fact that the importance of priest and vestry goes beyond legality. It goes into the dimensions of the spirituality and the psychological health of the parish. The priest and vestry together are a leadership team, like a husband and wife. They're co-partners in overseeing, caring for, and directing the parish. They're the parish parents. To a great extent, 
the limits of what the parish can become and what it can achieve is going to be determined by the quality of their ministry collectively and individually. Their strength, their commitment, their work, and their spiritual maturity. And as parents, priest and vestry set the example for the people of what they are called to be and called to do. Now, whatever you and I may think, or whatever we might wish, the people of a parish look to their priest and their vestry to see what is expected of them, who they are to be, and what they are to do. To the extent that they see good examples of Christian disciples, to that extent, they will be aided in becoming such themselves. To the extent that the priest and the vestry set a bad or a deficient example, to that extent the people will be hampered. That is the inevitable effect of headship. For those called to exercise this ministry of headship as our clergy and vestry together, this means that while we are not asked to be and to do more than the rest of the members of Christ's family, we most certainly are not to be and to do less than any other responsible member of the community. In fact, those exercising headship are required by the Lord's own command to incarnate in their lives the standards and the practice of life to which Jesus calls all his disciples. He said it. To those to whom much is given, much is required. In the ministers of headship, the people of a parish are to see that to which they too are called. And they are to be treated by us in the way God wants us to treat one another. So what does this mean for the priest and the vestry in the actual life of a parish? It means that their people should see their priest and their vestry together among them as people who are trying to grow into the likeness of Christ and who are working to love one another as he loves us, people who are absolutely faithful in worship, people who are putting their money where their mouth is and funding well the parish's needs and ministry, people who are involved in the ongoing task of having their minds through the educational ministry of the church informed with the mind of Christ people who are ministering the gift of fellowship to one another through involvement in the fellowship activities of the parish. And finally, people who are leading them in serving others by involvement in the service ministries of the parish and by reaching out to serve them, loving on them, being gracious and kind to them, greeting them, drawing them together, responding to their joys and griefs, cleaning up with them, and yep, often enough, being the ones that have to clean up after them. In other words, the parish needs its priest and vestry to be people who are bearing the weighty responsibility given to them of being their governors. Priest and vestry must take the lead. They must set the standard. I would put it this way, and I always did with my vestries. You are to bleed for your people through the sacrifice of your time, your talents, and your money to affect the parish's well-being and her effective mission and ministry for Christ. This burden of headship is also its glory, its honor, and its crown. Priest and vestries together are privileged to share in the very heart of Christ's ministry. Well, that's about it. There's a lot more that this guy could say to you and thinks should be said and understood in relationship to all this, at least two areas. One, how do you get this across to a parish and its people? the significance of the vestry ministry so that you're able to secure nominees for the office who are capable of it, who understand its demands and are really willing to embrace them. 
And secondly, what are the disciplines which are important in the life of the priest and the vestry working together, those disciplines which work to make them a well-functioning team? But those are whole other topics which deserve their own treatment and presentation. So for now, I simply hope that what I've shared with you will help you realize how great a dignity and how weighty a one is yours to be called to ministry on the vestry. And I hope that what I've said will assist you in exercising your ministry to God's glory and to the welfare of your parish, because remember, they are your people. God bless you. Thank you.